International Freeway. My name is David Jatwood. I'm the man rocking the Ray-Bans and I'm not wearing my shirt right now uh, because I'm doing my best to get a, a little bit of uh, sun on my chest because um, I, I got a glimpse of myself in the mirror. My legs are super tan. My four, forearms are getting nice and tanned, but uh, my, my chest is not. So I thought uh, uh, best to get some sun while I get a chance here. It'd be really horrible to come back to Canada and not have uh, at least a, a little bit of sun on my skin. Anyways, uh, we are in, can't remember the name of the village we're in right now, but we're actually kind of in the middle of the jungle. And you can see behind me, it's pretty, pretty jungly. We're on this uh, rooftop uh, terrace that we rented for the night. Uh, we're going to a show in town in this neck of the woods. Actually, I think it's down over there somewhere. And it's a religious ceremony where they have this fire dance and uh, Gabby really wants to check it out. So we're going to come down here and the traffic is horrible, horrible down here. And the way they drive is just, it's absolutely, it's absolutely scary. So um, we decided that instead of trying to, uh, you know, take off for the day and try and find a place to, uh, you know, work our way back and get back late to the, to the um, our apartment up in, uh, Salmon Yak, we thought we'd just get a place here for the night and just uh, just keep it simple. So we got this nice place. We actually got it for two nights. And uh, it's kind of cool, kind of quaint, very private. We get the whole, like I say, the whole rooftop to ourselves. We got a beautiful view of the ocean. And uh, it was just kind of funny because, you know, we went to Ubud a couple of days ago and we went into the sacred monkey forest. And I don't know why in my head I thought, well, this is where they are. We'll be fine. This is the, the monkey forest is where the monkeys hang out. And as uh, the host was showing us around and give us instructions on our place, uh, she was telling us everything goes into the bedroom. Everything goes into where the door, you can lock the door. Um, you can't leave anything out because monkeys, <laughs> monkeys, 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 she kept saying monkeys. <laughs> so they're going to steal everything. So, so uh, there's that to worry about. So, uh, yeah, so we're, we're out here. Um, uh, the drive was absolutely um, terrifying. Uh, we've been in a lot of uh, cabs since we've gotten up here. And, but this particular cab ride was, uh, it was horrific. It was scary. I honestly thought he was going to kill somebody or we were going to get killed or something. This guy was a maniac on the road. And I think he was even a maniac for Bali standards. Like Bali, Bali has pretty create pretty loose traffic rules. Um, there's more of a a lot of just suggestions on where to go. There's not like hard fast rules like there are in Canada. Like when that light goes yellow, you stop. Um, when someone else has come, it, it's here. It's there's no, there's hardly any traffic lights, um, and everything just kind of moves around each other. I think even comparatively to other people in Bali he was an insane driver i think other people in bali were probably saying this guy's crazy uh we should take his license away uh i, I really do he was he was absolutely horrible and, and scary and it was funny because when we got to this place we didn't actually have um the exact location because it doesn't show up on google map for some reason so he dropped us about a about a not a kilometer away sorry about a couple blocks away and I walk into this resident with the same, it had the same number on it. Um, on us and, you know, Gabby says, well, says the number, so let's hear. So I hop out, I go knock on the door, I walk in. Cause, and, and things, everyone has gates, right? These big, long, uh, like eight foot tall gates. So you have to walk in to, to say hello to anyone. So I walk in, I say, hello, these two people come up. They barely speak English, two older people. And uh, they start explaining to me, oh, no, no, this isn't the right place. And they're, they're trying to tell me, and I don't understand a word they're saying. Then we're doing a lot of hand gestures. We finally figure it out. We get the host on the phone, and she doesn't speak any English, so that was a plus. But we ended up just turning the corner, walking, and eventually we did find the place, and we got here. And uh, it is actually, it is kind of worth it. It was, it's kind of a beautiful spot. Um, today... <sighs> Today I want to talk about something that, uh, and I've said this before, and I, I know when I started this podcast, it was kind of, uh, this was for, uh, the whole, the, the whole um, genesis of this was uh, for me to be able to talk and kind of give some uh, thoughts and ideas uh, to my daughters about what I think uh, some some decent rules of life. And I've talked about this before, I'm sure I have talked about this before, but... Um, 
I, I thought, you know, I'll just talk again today. Something uh, poignant happened in, in, uh, in my life recently. And uh, uh, it, it involves family, as it does sometimes. And uh, sometimes the, the hurt with family, it, gets, it goes really deep. Now, I don't want anyone to look into this because I'm sure whoever's watching this right now, I'm not talking about you. I can, I can almost guarantee that. But the person I'm talking about, we had a falling out uh, about uh, 14 years ago, actually. Almost almost exactly 14 years ago. And it's been really rough. And I've just decided, you know, there was some things said. I decided not to react, which I think is always the best way. If someone says something out of emotion, if you react out of emotion, it just escalates. So I said nothing. And um, it got to the point where uh, we kind of decided to cut each other out of each other's lives. And it worked out. It worked out for me. It worked out for them, I, I, I think, because I haven't spoken to them in 14 years. So I, I think everything worked out um, okay in that, in that sense. And uh, recently something came up where um, some things were said about me and, you know, not, not positively. And, and it's okay. And this is the thing I want to say, like a lot of people were under my defense and it's like, it's not necessary. It really isn't. My, my thing is when someone comes at you and for whatever reason, there's a falling out for whatever reason, doesn't matter the reason it really doesn't. Um, because you know, it could be something really, really, uh, really harsh, really, um, visceral, or it could be something very petty, but if there is a falling out, um, and you find yourself with someone who's not your biggest fan. And I, I just say, just don't waste energy. Don't waste energy chasing after justice or what's right. Or, you know, someone should pay for the pain they caused you. Don't even waste your time with that stuff. It is such a waste of energy. What I do and what, and what I did in this case, was I just said, you know what? They're no longer a part of my life. That's it. It's, it's just nothing. I didn't say any, I didn't say anything. I just, I just quietly slipped away. And think of it like you're carrying on or holding a rock while you're swimming. Sometimes you just have to let that rock go. And that's what I did. I just let it go. And I moved on with my life. If you spend energy uh, focused on trying to get someone back or get revenge, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a waste of energy. And even if you get what you want, even if you get the revenge that you want, I promise you it's never satisfying. It's never satisfying. And uh, what does it say? They say if, uh, uh, what, is it? What, is it? what does it say? I think the thing is uh, revenge is like uh, drinking poison, hoping someone else, hoping your enemy dies. And that's kind of how I look at it too. And so I just let it go. It's, it's the easiest thing to do. It's, well, it's hard when your emotions are involved uh, because you feel anger and you feel, and, and sometimes even embarrassment. Sometimes you feel like you have to show everyone who knows you that how strong you are and how, how uh, ruthless you can be and, and just let everyone know no one messes with me. Sometimes you have to, that's, that's another feeling. But just let it go. It's the, it just, just let it go. And then, and then take all that energy and focus it towards yourself and your own personal success and there's um there's another saying which which i really really love uh and i think uh, uh i think this is really uh, poignant for the day if you really um but the, the saying is um living a good life is the best revenge and I, I didn't understand what that meaning was because I thought uh, the best revenge against death, you know, living because death sucks and it's coming and you can't avoid it. So you might as well have a good life and that's the best revenge. It's the best way to get back. It's like, no. When you have someone who has uh, ill will towards you and they want bad things to happen for you and you go and you just let them go in peace and wish them well, um, you know, wish them God's love and God's grace and let them go. And then you go on to have a great life. I tell you, nothing pisses off your enemies more than having a life of abundance and success. Ow, I love that. I, I personally love that. Going out, 
not doing anything, just literally just walking away and just going out the other direction and having a great life. Can you imagine how your ex would feel if they thought you were at home alone crying because they broke up with you and they want you to be miserable and you're out having the best time of your life, you're skiing, you're flying off the tropical islands, you're going to excellent concerts, you're, you're, you're just experiencing life to the fullest and guess what? You didn't need them to enjoy it that would just drive them crazy. That's the best revenge. If you really, really, really want to hurt someone that hurts you, let them go. Ignore them, move on, and have a great life. The best revenge is living a great life. It really is. And it is the best thing. And I can promise you this is when you look back and 14 years later, you you realize what you were put through and you decided not to engage and just move on and just have a good life and then 14 years later you're having the best life you're on a on a tropical island on a, in a loft over top of the indian ocean uh worried about getting a sunburn in february uh yeah you're, you've done it you've arrived and that is truly the best revenge you can possibly uh give somebody so i say do that don't waste time uh, chasing after revenge, just have a great life. Enjoy it. Make it uh, live a life of direction and purpose, and, uh, and and just and direction. And that's the best you can do. And I tell you, your enemies will squirm. Do that. It's the best thing to do. Anyways, guys, thanks so much. Oh, and by the way, thank you. I want to thank all my subscribers for being here for our 100th episode. And. When I started this back in uh, the fall, um, I remember I started because it was one of those things that I, the, this book I read said, just put out content, put out content. I was like, I don't even know what content to put out. So I just started chatting and it turned into something. And on our hundredth episode, um, here we are. I'm in Bali and I'm having a great life. I'm loving life. And I think we've actually hit our stride. And I want to thank my, all my subscribers for being a part of this adventure. And, uh, uh, being here to help me celebrate our 100th episode. Thank you so much. And of course, if you're not a subscriber already, maybe just hit the subscribe button. It wouldn't kill you. And it would do me a lot of good. If you like what you're seeing, hit the thumbs up. Always nice. And uh, another thing, really important, check out financialfreeway23.com. Yeah, dot com. Financialfreeway.23.com. Uh, .ca, sorry, financialfreeway23.ca. What is my, oh, I tell you, I got, I got tropical sun brain. It's lunchtime here, the sun's high noon, it's cooking hot. Uh, financialfreeway23.ca, check it out because that's where all the really, really great information is because that's where we put all the resources, that's where we put all the blog posts, the stuff we don't talk about here, we talk about there. And of course, all the video links are there as well, which so you just click on and check out any of them from that page, which is great. And finally, the best thing, of course, is to share the word, share the message that we're trying to get out. Um, tell people about how amazing it is to be able to go out and have a great life and don't focus on your enemies. Focus on you and your improvements and your health and your life and your happiness. And they will squirm. I promise you. I promise you. They will absolutely just die with envy when you're having a great life and they're stuck in their menial job in their uh 3.5 uh, bedroom uh 200 square foot sorry 2,000 square foot house somewhere trust me it's a good feeling it's a really great feeling spread that message i want that message out to everyone that i care about and people i don't even know yet the strangers who are friends i've yet to make I want them to know this. So spread the word, spread the good news. Even if you're not talking about my channel and not actually advertising for me, just talk about what we talk about here. Pass it on. I don't care if it, you, you're say, saying it's your own information. I don't care if you read it from somewhere else. I don't even care if you tell everyone that I'm a complete idiot, just as long as you get this information out to people so people know that they have an inalienable right to live a life of abundance. Thank you so much. And wherever you are on this great, beautiful planet, God bless and have a great day. Oh,